Good evening. How is everyone? Look here. I'm getting a whole jump start off when it comes to all of these receipts. I am not. I repeat, I am not waiting to do this. Like, I'm going to do a little bit each day, and then I'm going to make things better in my life. Because right now, this is my life. That's my receipts. Yeah, see, my basket is cute, but it's saying I'm overflowing with a whole lot of stuff because you done bought it. And, like, I was doing good for a moment in time. You see that? Those are real pretty. But somewhere along the line, it was just, like, bump it, and you just going to make them do what it do. But, anywho, I just want to talk a little bit about stress and stress management and how well you manage your stress because stress is a big issue in my house with my daughter um i have come to realize that lovely does not handle stress very well she doesn't handle stress well at all um and i'm not a doctor so i'm not diagnosing her i'm just from what i observe so um you know everything that happened with caitlin and it was their father that did it to Caitlin and um, just everything that went on with that entire situation. Well, you may not know. So Caitlin was molested by the man that I was married to. And that is lovely Kyra and Javen's father. So with that being said, lovely um, for some time had been speaking to him, but it had gotten to a point where... I'm just cut and dry with my kids. So it had got to a point where Lovely was like, you know, what you did was wrong. And, you know, if you know you're wrong, then maybe you may want to repent. And with her saying that and being disrespectful, okay, I had to cut off conversation. So that is an incident in itself. And then her knowing what he did to her sister in itself. And then him not being here a part of her life because of our separation. That in itself. Like, that's just stress on top of stress on top of stress on top of more stress. So, of course, when I was in the hospital, you know, the doctors, they're like, as time goes on and, you know, you've dealt, you're, you're dealing with all of this, things will come to light. It'll start to make sense. You'll sit back and you'll reflect and you'll, you'll tell yourself, about you know hey this happened hey that happened this could be the reason why this happened so it all makes sense now so everything is like coming back like you know maybe this is associated with it but i honestly believe like my daughter stressed herself so much with everything she was dealing with that it caused her optic neuritis um if you know because we still don't know we're not speaking it into existence but if she has the mog or the nap, no, NAPA or NAPA that is associated, that mimics MS, you can be so stressed out that your everything within your being, your body, the dynamics of your body, the functionality of your body is thrown off that, hey, this is my way to come in and cause disruption. It's the same thing like with dealing with cancer and everything else. You know, you're, you deal with it and not so much deal with it, I'm sorry, your body harnesses it until it's very vulnerable. So I feel like my child became vulnerable with all the stress she was dealing with and her body just couldn't fight no more. It's like, hey, I done held on to this for so long. I done dealt with it for so long. I done held you down for so long and then the body attacks itself. So in a sense, we, you know, me personally, like I'm, I pay attention to my kids, I do, but with all this happening, it just helped me to pay attention more. You know, I'm big on not isolating yourself. You can't have no doors closed. You know, we just talk for no reason. But it may be more that I need to do as a parent. And the more I I know what I need to do and the more that I see that I need to do more for my kids, in no way, shape, or form am I going to beat myself up for it. But I'm going to hold myself accountable because now that I'm aware of something, now I need to address it. And now I need to be a little more aggressive with my other kids because at the end of the day, it's like, okay, so you're dealing with this with one child. What if something similar is happening to this child and this child body may not go all off whack and attack itself, but you know, you might have to talk somebody off a ledge or those, uh, 
emotions that they're dealing with now it turns into criminalistic behavior and now they out here robbing and just being bad and outlandish so paying attention to what one child has dealt with and knowing how to move forward with the rest of your kids i think that's that is something big it is and i'm i'm a I, i'll baby you you know so I have to be careful with that because I'm always loving on lovely and kissing her. I do that to all my kids, but of course I'm doing that to her more now because of everything she's dealing with. And then I have to catch myself because the other ones will just be sitting there like, so you just going to give her all that sugar and you don't see me sitting over here like my cheek ready. So, you know, just paying attention to my kids more and, um, balancing out my love you know it may sound crazy but you do like you have to balance out you know your love and your attention that you give to your children but i mean like this is a lot oh my gosh this is so much it is so much weight just sitting right here that i went to sleep and when i woke up i'm like girl you you know your neck ain't turning right it's just locked up oh my goodness so even I carry it, but I, I mean, like me, like I'll be all right. You know, I'm going to cry. I'm going to leave them. I am going to do things for me. I'm going to get on my knees and pray. I'm going to call and talk to somebody like I have my outlets and that doesn't make me perfect, but it makes my way of handling my stress a lot easier. You know, I am able to manage my stress by doing those things. You know, my daughter, I'm having to teach her that. You know, like it's perfectly okay for you to be feeling some type of way and you call um, you call somebody and talk to them. You can talk to your aunties. You can talk to your friends. You can talk to granny. You know that you have to help them to understand that there is more than one way to deal with it. You don't always have to come to me. And I'm not that type that you bring everything to me. I want you to disperse that because, you know, some things you might be feeling and you you have inside i may not even want to hear that okay so uh it takes a village it absolutely does and i need that village to help me with raising my children i am not afraid to let it be known to ask or to tell anyone anything because i'm not that type of parent so um just just thinking you know and i'm just educating myself and i'm just i'm just putting all these pieces together it is it is a job okay it is not something that i am complaining about but this this is a surely a lot who is it it is a lot i think that's lovely hold on i'm coming back you all right Is there anything left? They took everything? Uh, I think they took the stuff that looked really good. But... She said the stuff that looked really good. <laughs> but um, just thinking about all that and dealing with all of that, I um, I know that I have to, um, I got to help me so that I'm able to continue to help them. So... <laughs> I talked to a whole lot of holistic people. I think that I've talked to lovely so much. I'm like, well, I'm going to feed you some chicken liver and, you know, I'm going to introduce protein back into your diet. And she's like, uh, I don't want to eat none of that. <laughs> so I'm soaking beans like we've been eating beans and different things, too, to supplement her not eating meat. But um, just got to cook them more often. And I do am one to not want to cook nothing but i've changed my mindset and i've stopped saying it so much and i've stopped convincing myself that you're gonna teach your kids how to cook every single thing so you ain't got to do nothing no i am the mother so even i'm taking responsibility for my actions and i'm gonna do what i need to do for them but it's it is definitely like a a learn uh, just a, you just change everything about yourself and you regroup and you think about things different and then you don't take nothing for granted and you don't sit back and you know 
beat yourself up about it. No, but you don't sit back and just be like, you know, this is just how things are going to be. You know, we could have accepted everything those doctors said. She's not going to see anymore. And just went with that and just went through life wondering how life was going to be for her with just one eye. But we took it. We took a different approach with it. And we didn't accept any of that. And we changed our mindset. And we your keys right now. And we made it our duty to do everything that we can to educate ourselves, to learn about this disease, to learn about optic neuritis, and to later, and to just make our life better. And um, I don't know. I don't be knowing sometimes. I just don't. It's hard. It's hard, but then it's not hard. You know, you just got to do it. And that's what I've been doing. Just been doing it. You know, so at any time, you know, y'all can call and check up on you. Be like, Angel, are you okay? Some probably be like, <laughs> no. <gasps> oh, God, no. Because that's how I be feeling. You know, I just want to break down and just let it all out. Like, I ain't, I ain't too proud of nothing. At, uh, nothing. Because... I don't know. I just know how delicate and how precious, you know, life is. And I want to be in control of everything about my body and what goes on with my body. And I'm not a robot. You know, I cheat, but I don't take it for granted. You know, I don't just lavishly do stuff and none of that. And I'm I'm teaching that to my children. I mean... It's just going to become a way of life for us. I told them to just get really used to this. Like, with all this COVID going on and everything, and, you know, you're not knowing whether or not your kids are going to go back to school. I told my kids way, 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 way back when, um, this is something that we're going to practice getting used to because we just don't know what's going to happen. So let's get used to staying home. Let's get used to utilizing everything within our home. You know, let's throw away some stuff. Let's get some stuff. Let's just, let's do those type of things. And then I'm so glad I did because they're not um, sitting around looking like they don't know what to do and they don't know how to function. And, you know, it's like they got to pick up the pieces and they're more, even more depressed. So I handled that area, but all the other stuff that came along with it, you know, you just wonder what, what you, I wonder what I could have done differently in that area to make it better. You know, you always sit back. You have time to reflect and wonder how, you know, you could have done something differently or a different approach you could have taken for something or, or about doing something. But, you know, that's not beating yourself up. That's becoming better so that if anything else comes up, you are that preventative because you've thought it out. And that's how I am. Like, I think things out. I think about the bad before I think about the good. I absolutely do. I always think about the negative. You know, Caitlin was here. I was like, you know, I want you to be the best that you can be with everything that you do. Because if I die today or tomorrow, I'm going to need you to be the head. You know, that's how I think. And that's the reality of it. You know, I don't want to bombard my mama with my kids that are still needing to be raised. They got an older sister and an older brother. They can do that. That is their responsibility. They're very capable. You know, do they know how capable they are? Probably not. Because they're thinking, oh, my mama going to live forever. Stuff happened. And you just have to mentally be prepared for it. So anybody out there that have children... They're all vulnerable. We as adults are vulnerable. You know, we just, we're, we're a little smarter than most of us anyway. We're just a little smarter and we, we make better choices. So with all that being said, we need to be advocates for our children. Teach them how to advocate for themselves so that when things come up, like I always say, 10 toes down, they can stand on their own two feet because they like lovely can't just be dependent on me with all of this that's going on. You got to educate yourself about optic neuritis. You got to educate yourself about everything you need to do to prevent your optic neuritis from coming back again. You, you, you. And I'm stressing that to her because she does. It's like when we go to the doctor, 
those doctors shouldn't talk any language that you don't understand because you've already educated yourself on it. And now that you've educated yourself so much, you are now telling the doctors what you think they should do with your care or how you think that they should treat you. Because I've been going to my doctor since I was 16. So her and I are like this, like, hey, Angel, how the kids know all of them by name. I love to build relationships with people. I don't like to be all over the place. I love stability and I love relationships. So with that being said, I personally, you know, I'm hand in hand with her with my health care. You know, what's best for me. And um, the only thing I've ever taken as far as a prescription drug is like omeprazole. And I was like, I don't want to take that. She was like, Angel, listen, you know, you have to take it. You have a, a stomach ulcer and it because of stress. I was so stressed out with this whole breakup. I just wanted the person to be gone and they would not leave. And it stressed me out that much that I got a stomach ulcer, you know, and that could have turned into cancer. So I was like, OK, this is serious. You need to take your medicine. So I did. But um. I learned everything about that. So I manage and I'm very, I'm this way because I don't want nothing invading my privacy. My body is my privacy. So I don't want nothing invading me where I got to take something to try to get rid of something and then prevent it from coming back again because now my body is vulnerable. I don't like that. So that's what I, you know, teach my children too. They, you, you have to be accountable. And the more you put before your children, the more you make your kids accountable for themselves, then they stop. They, they ain't attached to the hip. You know, you got babies two, three years old. That's that's a given. But the older they get, know your social security number. Know my number. Know your mom's number. Know, know the number to poison control. No more than 911. You know, put that type of stuff before your children to prepare them. Because there is something far worse that's going to happen than COVID. And it's so many people that's just going to be lost. They just, they will not be able to make it. They will not be able to stand on their own two feet mentally or physically. And if you're not prepared, then what? You know, I, I, I don't like being vulnerable. That's not comfortable for me. And I'm very confident with everything that I do. Anything that I am attaching myself to i'm very confident and comfortable with it because if i wasn't i wouldn't touch it or i would just say no so i want all of that into my children i want that for them but they have to want it too i could put everything before them i don't have any regrets everything has been put before them but they have to want it just as much as i do you know you can't force feed everything to them they have to want it so they'll go get it they'll chase it you know so it's just a lot i just had a lot of time to think about a lot of different things and reevaluate it and you know i have to put myself first too because if i don't i'll be sucked into a little dark hole and it's like what you doing you just existing or you living so it's just a lot that balance is the key you know balance is the key you can, you can do everything you need to do you just do it with balance and with ease and you i put myself first i absolutely do because if i put them first we'll be hungry we'll be out on the streets we, we wouldn't have what we have so balance is very important and whether you're with a husband or you're single like me or whatever the case may be anything that is put before you you can handle it don't let nobody deter you from that because there are a lot of people that profess to be your friends but they're not so just keep that in mind when you're making those conscientious decisions especially when you're dealing with your kids because they didn't ask to be here i always say that but they didn't so i just want to share that with you all don't forget to call me and check up on me be like angel Girl, is you all right? Remember, I'm probably going to tell you, yeah, but deep down inside, it's like, girl, I'm screaming. Literally, I am screaming. And nothing's coming out. But I'm screaming. Because I'm human. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and finish these. Do some of them. Because this, I mean, this stack is thick.
And we just in, oh, the year almost over with. I'm sorry. We in August. <laughs> yeah, the year is over with. So, yeah. But all right, y'all. Y'all have a good rest of y'all evening. And don't forget to call me. Don't forget to call me. I need to talk to people. Adult people, okay? Level-headed adult people. Like, just for real. I do. All right. Bye.